Hi everyone, it's username K and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with Halliwell Jones Motorrad in Chester and they have kindly let me loose on the BMW R1300 GS. So if you want to hear a few stats about this bike, a few cool little features and most importantly what it's like to ride, then keep watching and I'll play the intro. Today I am going to be riding the R1300 GS Tramontana 719 option. Now there are four options available. You have the base colour, which is white with blue accents. You have a triple black. You have a GS Trophy. And then you have the Tramontana. Now the R1300 GS's range from a non-T version which starts at £15,990 and then you can get a TE version which starts from £18,465 and then you can get this which would have started at that price but this one has been loaded with extras so this specific model like this would set you back £22,560. Now what has this bike got to make it that price? Well if we take a quick look at it we have the Akrapovic double silencer, we have riding assistant, we have heated seats and SOS as well. So the Tramontana Option 719 bike comes in Aurelius green with gold accents, gold wheels and gold bars an aluminium fuel tank and plenty milled bits as well. It also comes with comfort seats, comfort passenger pegs, a centre stand and an electrically adjustable windscreen. Since it's a TE it comes standard with the dynamic package which includes dynamic suspension adjustment, gear shift assist pro or shift assist pro, pro riding modes and a sport brake. The touring package comes as standard on the Tramontana TE, so that includes central locking, preparation for GPS, preparation for panniers and hand protection extension. So this is what it is like for me to sit on this bike as a 5 foot 4 individual with a 29 inch inside leg measurement. Now this bike has a seat height of 850mm and this is what it's like for me to sit on the bike. Now if I want to put my feet down I've got my very tippiest of toes down and that is in normal boots not even you know when you're a bit more restricted in all your bike gear but if we're stopping at lights just a little bum shuffle it's nothing that I'm not used to because my own R1200 GS has the exact same seat height. If you want to make this lower, now there is no seat height reduced option, but you can spec this bike up with adaptive vehicle height control, whereby when you come to a stop, the bike lowers to 830mm, which for me would be a blessing, but this bike just isn't specced with that, so I'm just going to have to make do with my little stumpy legs. Right guys, here she is, the R1300 GS. Time to get on it and see what we think. Okay, so start. Ooh. Hello, hello. Levers are adjusted nicely. Right, let's get out of here. So with the bike we've increased horsepower, we've got 145 brake horsepower, 
up from the 136 that it did have and the torque has increased from 143 newton meters of torque to 149 now that might not seem like a massive increase numerically but that 49 from the 43 will make such a difference especially saying as it was already the torquiest adventure bike on the market now it's it's just very much made a gap between its competitors and itself dash are very similar so because we're on the tramontana with the electronically adjustable windscreen we do have a lot of this perspexy cladding at the side which you won't see on a rally or a base model unless specced up with an electronically adjustable windscreen so that takes some getting used to because it's it looks very very different but it doesn't look unsightly gold bars nice touch on the tramontana and then since it is the tramontana we've got these nice little milled bits here we've got milled adjustable levers which are very very nice and they have good adjustment in them as well this has preparation for gps which is there now i'm surprised at that because i would have thought that they would have gone down the route of putting just the foam cradle on there but they've actually kept the preparation for the nav 6 or whatever comes next so that is great news if you own a 1250 you don't have to throw your nav away or sell it in the hopes that someone will buy it i know with this model a lot of people had high hopes that it would get the massive dash that is on the rt but i think that would have looked ridiculous the 6.5 inch color tft is perfect for this bike and it's not distracting it's nice and simple and i'm really really glad they, they chose to stick with that i really like this that they've kind of brought over from the gsa but it has um, charging facilities in there it's got a usb it's big enough for a phone we've still got keyless ride so the fuel cap is still keyless device when you switch the ignition off so that was different i looked and i thought i saw something in the mirror but it's actually the triangle for the ride assist right we're in a 20 so we'll see if it can set cruise control as low as 20. yeah it can so this bike is specced with riding assistant so what do we have with that we have the active cruise control we have blind spot detection you can see the little triangle there that lights up if something's in your blind spot if there's one thing i've noticed about trying to get it off its side stand is i feel like the side stand is a is a bit it leans it over a bit further than before which isn't good for somebody like me with small legs having said that it shouldn't be too much of an issue if i was to have the adaptive vehicle height control so there is that but yeah just with its standard um seat height of 850 mil with the dsa suspension yeah it leans over a fair bit I was on a bit of a hill and I couldn't really hoist it off its stand and that's with half a tank so I had to just get on it and push it a little bit further till the floor was a bit level before I could get it off the stand and I only really had that on my GS and the 1250 in a lot more extreme situations than that creep out creep out I think this is mold. Ah, uh, another 20. Another 20, you're killing me. You're killing me with these 20s. Right, let's have a look at this windscreen. Let's put it up. In the highest position it can go. It's raining, let's give us all the weather protection we can get. 
I love the fact that these pots aren't painted. It's just one less thing to go wrong, isn't it? So we're going from the 20. I think it's the 20. I don't want to risk it in Wales. And now we're going into a national. So. got new tyres and a bit of rain never a good mix so we'll take it nice and easy it seems to handle nice enough it seems to handle right enough I don't know what that big dirty black line is in the middle Oh, it's, it's a day fit for ducks, isn't it, really? It's a day fit for ducks as opposed to test riding a brand new £22,000 bike on janky, gritty back roads. Why can't you release this in summer? That's what I want to know. It's just crud everywhere. I just wanted to get the, a feel for it. It definitely makes noises that I wasn't expecting, like ooh, noises. The back brake is wonderful. It's got that sport caliper on it. It says BMW on it, but when you look on the back of the caliper, it says Brembo. So maybe Brembo have done something with BMW, but BMW still want their branding to be predominant. Look at this. This is just frightening when you're on a £22,000 bike that's not yours. Oh, it's just... It's a grim day. It certainly feels like lighter. It certainly feels lighter and it is. It's like 5% weight reduction on this bike. 12 kilograms off it from the 1250. So it does definitely feel lighter. What is going on? Everywhere's flooded. Well guys and girls, I've just stopped to change a battery and I figured I'm gonna put my heated grips on. Now, since that is the power button and there's not the big button in the centre, we're going to have to figure out how to do this. So I believe you press that, this new button here, which takes you to a multi-rocker switch. So we'll go into heating and we'll put heated grips on two and we'll put heated seat on two as well. So if we scroll, we can access the windscreen from here to go up and down. DCT and damping as well which is currently in dynamic so you can adjust the suspension on the fly with these two buttons but you can have more function with those if you press the rocker switch one as well cruise controls in the same position we've got SOS on this which has been specced up with it and then we've got the modes as well it's not very good um, conditions at all for a, a first ride on one of the most exciting bikes of the freaking year, certainly. Okay, so the stand's got a little nubbin thing on, which makes life easier. It's definitely got that boxer shake when you fire it up. Let's go, go, go. we've got more power and we've got more torque but on a day like this I don't think it's wise to try and see if I can find those gains and <laughs> those increases because it could only end one way and that will be Halliwell Jones never lending me a bike again <laughs> but yeah riding position real nice you can stand up lovely on it you can sit down the seat's quite grippy We've got this, which just stops the need for like a tank protector because it is a giant tank protector. The engine is noisy. It's a noisy engine. Like it's a mega noisy engine, I think. 
certainly my experience of this bike but yeah it's quite a loud bike a loud is what i get as a first impression i mean i'd love to test out the handling and the suspension and the brakes you know by actually being able to go a little bit quicker but these kind of roads we're just going to have to get the bare bones first impression today oh the heat grips are nice the heated seat is lovely it's warming my tush yeah i've got my earplugs in and it's definitely noisy <laughs> it's noisy so we've got the indicators built into the handguards which is very much not a bmw thing but one of the criticisms was, well, if you go off-road and you drop it, that's going to be expensive. But if when you order one, you spec it up with an enduro package, it does relocate those indicators and doesn't have them in the handguard. So that'll be good for you guys to know. It doesn't feel small at all. I feel like people thought, oh, it's a lot smoother, sleeker. You know, it's, it's looking more, well, less tractor-like and less agricultural. So it's going to feel a lot smaller but it doesn't it's still when you walk by it it's still got a bit of a presence to it the tank does seem a little bit skinnier from just looking down at it but actually i think we've lost a liters capacity haven't we from the 1250 so we're rocking 19 liters which you can definitely tell it is a different shape it's definitely a different shape you know we may have lost a liter but they claim that the bike is more economical so shouldn't be too much of an issue we've got cross boat wheels on this which are 1.8 kilograms lighter than the previous cross boat wheels but yeah so far it does feel good it's just a sound that takes some getting used to yeah it rides really nice it rides really nice i just want to take it on some dry nice roads that aren't janky and gross and crap it's a very comfy bike to ride, I'll give it that. I've got a comfort seat on this with heating and that's lovely. I absolutely love the BMW Dash, it's no secret that I absolutely adore it so much. It's the best Dash on the market in my opinion and no one will ever convince me otherwise. In fact, with this one now we can pop it in a sport screen. Yeah, yeah. We've got terrible lean angles today, maximum of 31. That's because it's fit for ducks today. Okay, let's just try and sort a little bit of stuff out here. Just need this hand to make life easier. Oh, them heat grips are lovely without a glove. Right, okay, so let's have a look. Let's go into some stuff here. Let's go into it. Settings go down let's go into assist what have we got suspension damping configuration we don't need to configure it i don't i don't need to tweak it i'm not that bothered about that cruise control we've got that active cruise control set and it's set to comfortable so that's fine we'll roll with that that'll probably give us a bit more of a, a space between us so front collision warning medium we'll go for that warning pulse yeah braking assistance yeah so if you don't want the bike to brake for you with that front collision warning you can switch it off which is good to know lcw uh, hill hold is on auto that's fine so the assists are on vehicle settings riding mode pre-selection so we've got three selected at the minute, but we can have four. It does a maximum of four. So we'll put Dynamic Pro on there. If we wanted to tweak that, you'd go into configuration. And that's when you can really fine tune the throttle response, the traction control, the ABS, and then you can reset it. So I'm gonna put the traction control in rain mode today because the floors are greasy as hell but we still want the engine to be quite dynamic. So that's what Dynamic Pro is good for. Kind of like dynamic, but just a bit more involved. Lights. So that's on. 
tyre pressure sensors are on, that's great. Lock when ignition is off, you can switch that on but we'll just keep that off. Systems. So it looks like we've got everything set. So we've got the cross sport wheels with this gold. They look beautiful and they're a lot lighter than the originals. I really like this nice little window to check your oil that you have on this. I like how sleek it looks. I know you're all thinking it's looking a bit Chinese, but I just think it's more modern and will attract a younger audience. And let's be honest, GS riders are usually, as a rule, a bit older. So this may well attract more younger folk, which is going to be their future market. So makes sense. This subframe is pretty chunky. Uh, but it looks quite nice. We have this, which is for the electrics for the central locking if you go for panniers. The Akrapovich, it sounds quite nice, but I don't have anything to compare it to because I haven't ridden one with the standard can on. It sounds throaty enough. Um, I thought it would be more raspy, like on the 1250. You got a real burble with that, but not really getting a proper burble with it. I will ride it back in Dynamic Pro. That's usually when you do get burbles if you're going to get them anywhere. I like this, that it's not paint and it's the same on the shaft drive, on the final drive. So hopefully that'll be more durable. The centre stand's a bit odd. This comes out. Uh, with the Tramontana, you've got all the milled bits, you've got milled bits. Am I a fan of it saying GS there and GS there? I don't think so. Am I a fan of it not having a backlit switch gear? I mean, for such a big step up from the GS, you know, range, it's so anticipated, you'd have thought they would have probably done that, but they haven't, so that kind of sucks a bit. This, I think, is absolutely stunning. I love the continuation from the seat covers to the bulk of the tank. I think that's beautiful. I think it's going to stop a lot of scratched tanks. I like how all this is enclosed. That's good. The brakes, the BMW branded, they say Brembo on them. These levers are beautiful, nice and easy to adjust. And the light, I quite like it. Because it's just the four, four lines lit up and I think it looks pretty good. If I was getting one of these first things I'd put on it is some rad guards, personally. Comes with the GS Trophy but it doesn't come with the Tramontana. All the ones in the showroom have torrents next to rubber, so that's my experience. But yeah, so far, so good. I just wish the roads were bloody better than they are, because they're dreadful. Gravel everywhere, bloody gravel, rain. Anyway, let's get back on it and see it leans over quite a bit more, in my opinion, than the 1200 that's in my garage possibly 1250 takes a bit of a yoink to get it up and my foot just reaches a little bobble there so that's not too bad at putting the stand in which is good this has been specced up with an sos button if you guys don't know what that is it can detect an impact and send emergency services to you it can sense how severe it is through sensors and stuff you can press it if you just need assistance from somebody a voice will come out of it you can speak to them they will speak back quite interesting but yeah for the mode let's put it in dynamic pro so we've got that up to traction control but we've still got a good throttle and yeah let's give it let's give it a go shall we about to head into a nest you madly baby <laughs> okay yeah the power is nice the power is nice i'm using a bit more back brake than i normally would just because the floor is damp and i have new tires and that back brake is responsive it's nice it's good we like it yes dynamic pro is giving me that whack that i wanted that's good drop it down a few cogs 
since we got a fairly tight bend I reckon ah, not too bad, the arrows were a bit dramatic swing it round oh yes, oh yes impressions are wholly positive well guys that concludes my vlog on bmw's r1300 gs once again massive thank you to halliwell jones and motorrad in chester they let me loose on their loan bikes and they're a stonking company to work with so if you're after a new or used bike then certainly consider them and yeah, if you've got any questions on the R1300GS or you want to see any specific content from me on this bike, then please let me know in the comments. And yeah, until the next time, guys, take care and I'll see you then. Bye.